All right, we'll call the meeting to order. 604, 605. Anything that needs to be adjusted on the agenda? Yeah, Mascoma Bank is going to end up going to the next meeting. Our lawyers working with Mascoma on changing some language okay. he didn't like in the loan. So we'll delete out the Mascoma Bank piece. Yep. Anything else? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, just need a motion to approve the agenda as amended. So moved. Dave said says he's waving his hand. He seconded. Second, Dave. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. Hurt yourself, Dave. <laughs> yeah, we have one appointment. Um, so we have Scott Putney here to um, thank you to talk with us today in regards to the Energy Committee for the White River Valley Energy Resilience Coordinator. So we'll let you. Yeah, you can go first. Get you in and out quickly. No. Bottom line is, um, I'm here because of my rank. You know what I mean? But basically, it's a group of people who are trying to get get the um, towns together to hire a somebody to help do the numbers, try to get um, grants and that sort of thing for the for the towns. Um, the model they're using is one where the wealthier towns, uh, Woodstock, um, Norwich, Barnard, some of those towns got together and hired one. And so there is a, a model for that type of thing. And um, I believe that it will, will at some point save the town money and, um, and, and help it. Um, I'll try to answer questions. Actually, Nicole, um, who was the head of, of, the, of the Bethel Energy Committee got done. And I, as it turns out, she has transitioned. So she's a head of this group. Um, the group is being aided by Two Rivers on a voluntary basis and um, vital communities. But she is the volunteer head person. And basically it kind of fell into my lap when she left there was only two of us on the uh, thing so i'm trying to keep the energy committee alive um just so that you know we've actually added um three people um and uh and gene comes regularly so um we're making progress yeah this is what we're disappointed disappointing. i've noticed a little bit here that's great that's great news. and um nicole and at, at one point we had two law students, and so Noel, Nicole and the law students kind of went down this rabbit hole of trying to put things into the, the town's rules or documents, which that wasn't my thing. My thing was trying to help, you know, poor people and get pe information out to people. In any case, the reason I'm here is um, what, what uh, the Bethel energy committee as a group would like to support the town of Bethel joining this group of, of other towns. I believe there's six that are kind of committed, three that are maybe committed, and then there's another four or so that um, haven't seen to shown any interest. So the, the big push is to try to get some money into to um, for this coming fiscal year, um, what would be really great if if the uh, town would allocate some money in the budget for this um, going forward. Um, if not, uh, we'd like to have you put it into a uh, into a vote um, at town meeting. Um, so so I if I get this right, um, it looks like if the active towns participate, our share would be twelve thousand two ninety. Well, of course, depends on who joins. So it's just like herding cats, and I'll yeah, try to, it is basically trying. Nobody wants to pay more, and Pittsfield doesn't have as much many people or as much mm -hmm. money, and so they've tried to do it by grand list. Yeah, so they divide that. up the grand list by all the towns that are in, mm -hmm. and that would be your share. Randolph is the biggest town. Bethel is is um, in the middle. Yeah. And then Pittsfield and Stockbridge are, are, are less. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know if you want to put the towns up there. You can, but um, yeah, I have the. Do you want to see the PowerPoint one presentation? Of, one of one of the, there was quite a few questions in other towns. Randolph has been for their select board. Brookfield has been before their select board, um, and someone has been before South Royalton's select board. A lot of the, and I realize all the towns are strapped strap because of the floods and and just general general yeah. town things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in the long run it'll save it'll save money um, and and keep us ahead of things instead of trying to um, do it ourselves. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you have any questions or anything that I can. I, I have a question that. Um... So I know that you guys were I know Two Rivers was acting in just an advisory capacity, or just kind of right. well, attending the meetings and yeah, they well yeah. they they try they they're basically trying to they're helping us come up with what if we hire somebody as a as a Two Rivers employee? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they, they said I I had a I had a uh, back and forth with them a little bit, just saying that obviously if you if towns agreed for sure to pony up the money then they would bring on more staff. They also said that depending how many people joined, um, they may be able to manage some of the stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, in-house now, and they are bringing in new staff at the end of the month, of this month or next. So they're already staffing up without our dollars. And um, But they did say that they would be willing you know, if a bunch of people join to, to staff, well, which would be nice. You need to house them somewhere. And, and I, we don't have to room. And again, you, you don't know how dealing with one select board, try to deal with six or eight. Um, they And everybody doesn't want to pay more than their share. And what are we going to get back? I look at it a little differently. You know, we share a school with South Royalton. So if South Royalton gets $12 more than Bethel, Fine. Randolph was, you know, has people go to work up there and we need Randolph in the hospital. If they if they find a way to make the hospital better, we all benefit. So um, okay and again, in the, in, at the end of the day, it all washes out. But I, it, it frustrates me that each town says, well, how much am I going to save? And and, you know, yeah. all that sort of stuff, which is impossible to. To, yeah. to figure out it's just hard like you said because money is so tight i mean we're looking at leasing options we're looking at 12 and a half percent of our eraf which is our share of all the all the flood damage that we had um so we're looking at paying 12 and a half percent of that and like i said so it just our health insurance premium just went up and so coming out of the gate, you know, I mean, I always attempt budgets at level funding and see where I can get once I start, you know, but we're coming out. It's a tough year. <laughs> I, 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 I totally understand. That. But one of the things is there is money out there today. There is. By the time we have another election, I'm sure those numbers are going to be cut or slashed. Yeah. Um, okay. So, again, um yeah, I'm just trying to explain again. The, as a group, we we support the idea. Absolutely, no, and, as you should. You wouldn't come here to say you don't support it. <laughs> no, so it's interesting. I know I read through it, and I'm sure the select board has questions for you. But just an example of, of things we've talked a million times about. What if we put curtains up in here? And yeah. Of course, you can't because or whatever. And well, but window applied. dresser window dressers would work. Yeah, to. we talked about that and we did, um, I've actually applied for, there's another through the Merck because we got the 4,000. So I've already applied for the other grant that's open for the uh, town office as well as this. They just haven't scheduled our, um, now, is our that, energy, uh, what's the word I want? Energy efficiency. Preliminary Their preliminary audit. Thank you. So, but we have done that to open up because I guess you can get, I think if our memory serves, you can get up to half a million. So, and we certainly, um, so is a you, little bit you here, used but... the four thousand? No, this oh. is beside the four thousand because you qualified for the four. You were able to apply for another one, which which we did. Well, and that's so, and again, that's those. But those are things that with each town doing those things. If we did it as a group, right? And each town is doing this, and we're fighting against each other instead of instead of working as a team. I got it. And that's that's the whole the whole goal of this. And again. I, speaking for the energy committee, we would put our, if we were in charge of the 4,000, we would put it towards 
this campaign, yeah. which would take, yep. and, and again, I don't know if it was the last one year, two years. That's the thing that I think is the thing that we need to worry about. You get into this, but it takes two years to do it. So now you're doing it for two years and, yeah. and that sort of thing. So Always I don't time. know if you've got any other questions, I'll try to answer them. Two, yeah, two quick things. One, uh, our energy committee has said we would give 4,000. So have seven of the towns have said they would take their $4,000 and put it in for this first year. Is that even, is that if their select boards agree or? That's, well, yeah. yeah okay. And it's if their select boards agree to go into the program. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Okay. So that's $35,000 toward the total. Yeah. Uh, for the first year. We can do that because it's a pilot program for the first year. Yep. Um, so the, uh, and the other thing is with Two Rivers, there were a number of options available that the committee looked at. And the committee looked at the option of Two Rivers managing the program but not housing it mm -hmm. because if they manage it, it costs 80% or something that, that mm -hmm. becomes their sure. overhead cost. Mm -hmm. uh, and if they don't, they charge us 10%. So that we then added, you know, that into the, the salary. So 80% so. if they house them, 10% if you house them somewhere else. Right. And, and so this proposal is for the less expensive. Okay. And that how that person could be literally housed in a town or it could that person could be housed out of his or her home. Uh, but the, the point is that we've the, you know after all of the different, options and so on and so forth that we looked at. And this is a little bit different from what Two Rivers ordinarily does. Yeah. So it's not just about grant writing. It's also about recruiting, training, broadening it out so that individual citizens in towns have educational opportunities and can learn and so that everybody saves, not just the the town budgets. Having up there and paying the extra is a far better thing than have a corner of the town hall where these people work in Bethel or Randolph or whatever. It's just kind of it's it's all centralized. So this person isn't trying to go to some other place. And they also deal with most of that extra is they're dealing with the social security, they're dealing with all the insurances, they're dealing with all that sort of thing which they've already got the infrastructure. That's, that's included in ten percent. But but again, I still think it's I think it's better to have it right there and and uh, but you mean have them housed at two rivers? What's that? Are you saying it's better to have them right there, meaning housed at two rivers? I would not working remotely. I'm just trying to understand what you're saying. Well, I, again, I think of having at Two Rivers instead of having it at another oh. location. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, is he going to go, the person going to go to the other so he doesn't have to pay, you don't have to pay for heat. You're going to have to pay heat for heat one place or another. So I see what you're saying. I'm just, I just think it's, it's nickel diming again. And I don't see the additional benefit okay. to save the, save the money. That's my personal opinion. So again, I don't know if you guys, you guys obviously don't make a decision now, but again, what I would really like is a line item in the thing. If you don't use it, fine. Um, if you do, I mean, you still have control over it. Um, and, but I, I think the problem is they're, what they're running up against is they can't get enough through town meeting and whatever and, and obviously this money wouldn't be spent until the next physical year. Um, and 
So if we if we wait for another year cycle, we're that much further behind. And and uh, um, so the goal is to at least get some sort of support from the from the select board. And if you read this this <clears throat> thing that talks about questions from Randolph and South <clears throat> Royalton, um, I think they pretty much answered them to the best they, they could and probably a lot better than I can. I mean, I think, you know, I guess my opinion, a uh, few things would be, you know, the, the first part is, you know, testing the waters to see who, who is an active member and who isn't an active member to see how. Well, that's kind of a chicken. And the egg. If Randolph and South Royalton and Bethel and Braintree and Pittsfield wait to see who's in, <laughs> somebody's got to commit something. Yeah. If, even if it's not money. It's well, I mean, there, there's just so many layers to this. There's the, um, you know, who who pays for what portions of it. And, you know, if somebody like all of a sudden, like a Randolph decide not to do it, they're, they're a third of the pie. Right. So then, and then, and then let's say everybody wants to do it. Right. Then there's the discussions on what, what are we actually getting for our money? Right. Like, so if you're going to put in X amount of dollars, what are you going to get out of that? that as a business well it's, on. that's really hard to quantify okay. it's impossible to quantify but for example right. rochester just got a charging thing that they their their committee went through a bunch of hoops and and i guess basically they ended up getting green mountain power to put it put it in there but that takes hours and hours of stuff so if one person is um, we're talking about trying to put a put a a charging station or two in the parking lot at, at our meetings. And hopefully we'll have more information to, to let you guys know, but just so if you're gonna retire in there, that's something that we're trying to, to trying to figure out. Um, well, I guess what I'm, what I'm saying to the committee, my opinion, everybody else can weigh in too, is you know, if we are at the point where we are ready to make a financial commitment in this case, to hiring or being a part of a hiring of an individual, then I think that we need to make sure that we have the information, not just what's in here, but where is that money going and, and what is that going to get us in return? And that has to come in many different shapes. One is, you know, if you're going to hire somebody for $100,000 a year, then I would expect that person to do $3 million worth of projects a year, you know? So, and then where would those go? And, and like you said, one project could take a lot of time. So how is that going to be shared around eight to 13 members? And then, and then I think you have to go even farther than that. I mean, uh, not just what the state goals are here, but at the end of the day, if we as a town commit a certain amount of money, what does that get us? Not, not a charging station or, or window dressing or whatever, but what does that actually get us? Like where, how far does that put us ahead on greenhouse gases and temperature and stuff like that? And I know the answer is we don't know. Well, but if we're going to make a financial commitment, I think we owe, and I'm not saying, I'm saying if you're going to go to put this on the warning, I think you have to be prepared to answer those questions. And so, and, and I think one of those questions is almost can't be answered that you need to start thinking about how you're going to answer that question is, well, if we spend all this money 30 years down the road, what is 30 years going to look like in this town? Well, I, I, And that's the answer that nobody can get right now. Nobody can quantify the answer. It becomes, well, we need to do our best part for the environment and this and that. But what is it getting us? Well, if we spend $300,000 over 10 years, what is that getting us? What is it going to look like? Is the temperature going to be lower, higher? What's it going to look like? What's the data? Well, I think that's... That the the climate change is really is really kind of a, a secondary thing that that's a goal obviously but that isn't a primary thing the primary thing is to raise to 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 save money over time instead of just throwing the money out the window hopefully with help we can get educated about all these different things as far as a charging station if we've got a charging station will that or won't that Will that help uh, the rest of the sandwich shop? Will that help anything else in town? Um, 
I don't know. I don't know the answer. I can't quantify it. Um, but that's that's something that might bring people to town to come. They they charge. Um, it would only deal with it if we can actually show a profit or at least not a loss. But all that stuff takes a whole lot of time and energy. Um, one of our new members is 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 working diligently on that. Basically, it's basically set up right now so that you could have you could have a charging station. Actually, I could charge my car there tonight if I right had, because if it I had, has if I had right. had hit a panel. deer with it. But the <clears> point <throat> my point is the infrastructure is there. The problem is how to the get the money that used to, when we did this before, it was a credit card thing. Now they have apps and all this sort of thing. And, and um, so the whole thing has changed. So we're looking at that again. Um, but that's, that's the, the hard part is how are we going to make money? Um, and anyway, well, so we got a little bit of time. Of, to of the yeah is you get someone who begins to take a look at the town in terms of its energy expenditures, its climate greenhouse gas emissions, uh, begins to look at how those, uh, what we have to gain by doing X, Y, or Z. Uh, we have somebody who's dedicated to uh, those, uh, those applications and those grants uh, not just applying for them, but but managing them when they come in. Uh, the uh, we get that whether we have uh, whether we have a flood event that takes our staff away from doing that kind of thing or not, because we now for twelve thousand dollars a year we have somebody dedicated to doing that. We have uh, towns that have done this in the past in other configurations have found that they have saved enough money to pay for the initial outlay. Towns in Vermont? Yes. Uh, so in in two rivers. <laughs> I mean, uh, so uh, it's... it's uh, but I think I'm not, so I'm, not that. Guaran I'm not going to guarantee that, but you're asking for deliverables. Those are some of the deliverables that have been identified. The deliverables are that there would be a regional view in terms of small towns right here along the White River uh, that are uh, that the, the disadvantage with two rivers is that they have so many towns mm. that that we get a very small piece of the pie. Yep. With eight towns, we get a much bigger piece of the pie, whether we're regardless of how it's how we're funding and the the funding scheme in this proposal is for uh using the grand list so that towns are charged uh according to quote their ability to their ability to pay mm -hmm. uh the we are so those are some things the uh uh, that have been proposed. Uh, what's being asked for tonight is not is Bethel willing to be one of the towns? We can't come up with a specific dollar amount until we know which towns are right. going to be, be in the game. Um, and and uh, the problem. <clears throat> it's the car before the horse or the horse before the car. And this has been, and these conversations have been going on for a year and a half. Yeah. And, and that's, and so we're at the point of saying to the towns, okay, it's time to say, are we going to move forward or are we not? 
Um, the, we, you, I know you've already looked at all the town things, but have you done anything to improve the, the energy things? Um, there's talk about redoing the, the um, uh, town garage. Mm -hmm. And I know you're supposed to look into energy efficiency and all that sort of stuff. But if you've got this one guy that's, you know, knows about energy efficient grants that may you could apply for if you put uh, uh, energy efficiency into your into your building, it might save you the, some of the cost of building the building and also saving you the the helping the climate change and saving you money going forward. And obviously we would do that. I mean, when we do projects, I did one of the town office and you register with Efficiency Vermont and they can help you with that as far as what you get for grants and what's there for savings. And of course that would be part of the RFP of building it. We, we, you know, we understand there's now residential building energy standards as long and as well as commercial, but just to clarify a statement that you made, Gene, when you said that the grand list, um, is you know our ability to pay i i think that's kind of a little bit maybe not a true statement in the sense that or it's a misleading statement in the sense that the tr the grand list is a grand list but the people's ability to pay is not necessarily based on the grand list i mean that's obviously what drives the taxes but the more we raise the budget based on the grand list increases people's taxes so i think somebody on the fixed income just because we have a the grand list that's increased doesn't necessarily make it any easier on and, them. In, in terms of comparing town to town, town, town yeah, it's the only okay, way to really the, uh, do it. It's it's a way, like a per capita. Like well, there's per capita, but per capita is yeah. That's the in the in the, this, in the the conversations with the committee. Yeah. The committee said quite a few of those different options. Yeah, um, grand list on, seems baby. to be this the simplest total population. Um, I lost my train of thought. Um, but the the if you looked at different town, the average income of the different towns, yeah. um, actually Bethel is is not one of the highest ones. No, our median house income so, grew you know, after the census. Theoretically, Pittsfield has got a lot of property, but not many people. So they how do you how do you even it, it out? It's hard to be equitable. I know Dave Eddy has a question. He's he's online. <clears throat> Now, I was wondering if the the search committee for this regional manager has done much work there because you're going you're going to be looking you're going to pay a fairly substantial salary, which unfortunately in this mode of time you'll get probably ninety percent of your applicants won't be uh, qualified, and then you're telling what they're going to do and they've got to be seriously qualified, so. Is there anybody out there just waiting to come fill that slot and work for us? I mean, that that would be my question. You know, here, here we want 130 grand, and we'll go. The first guy that says yes, you'll do it. We'll throw him throw that money in his lap, and this is what we want, and hope the hell he does it. Well, I think I think that's another good reason to go with Two Rivers is that they they would be the ones that interviewed. They'd be the ones that that would hire these people. And that makes it a little bit more more expensive, but um, I two, rivers, two rivers has given a budget that includes one hundred and forty thousand some odd dollars for salary and benefits. Two rivers is uh, the quote employer, uh, so and would be not that they're going to necessarily be. Um, set loose to find the person without any input from the steering committee, there would certainly be that kind of input, but two rivers is the employer. So the 10% uh, fee is them. The 10% the 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 fee is for their doing the hiring and the firing and the supervision and handling all of the bookkeeping and the payroll and all the benefits that whole thing is being done by two rivers. Are there people that'll do it for that? That's what they're hiring for right now when they're hiring planners. Mm -hmm. So I have a question, it says pilot year and second year, is this just gonna be a two year project it, or is this something that's gonna continue on it, that we have to, taxpayers have to 
pony up every year. Two two answers. <laughs> one, we can't we can never as a town talk about more than one year because of the way that the budget goes. Right. Okay. But the first year we're talking about using mm -hmm. the four thousand dollars from seven of the participating towns that have already told us that their energy committees or their boards have said that they can they would do that. That's thirty five thousand dollars off the top. Seven times four is twenty eight. Sorry, I'm a math guy. <laughs> He's saying 11 towns times oh, four. I thousand. just heard seven. Oh, seven. Seven, seven times four. Okay, so 28,000. And so that's the active towns, seven. But that's only if the select boards agree. Have you had any select boards agree yet? Come out and say they will definitely put this in their budget? Basically the same as what you're, you're doing. And bottom line is we're trying to get answers. Yeah. We don't have, we can't definitively say this yeah. is what's going to happen. And it's hard too, because it's just the start of, I'm just started today working on budget. So by the time we, you know, if this, you know, at the beginning, we put everything in at first to see what sticks and then see what the budget looks like. And then they can start going from there. So I think it's hard to commit or so early because we haven't, you know, our first budget meeting will be the 13th, but we're also later on the agenda, we're talking about policing, which is a big, a big number for us. The I don't, I totally understand. I know you do. You're good with money. <laughs> this, this, uh, the whether a second year is hopefully it would go for more than that, but towns and the experience with uh, a consortium of towns down in Sharon and, and in that area that did this several years ago. They had one town back out after a couple of years and another town came in after a couple of years. So it's a it's an ongoing program, but it wouldn't have been honest or fair for the from the committee's perspective to say, oh, it's only going to cost you twelve thousand dollars a year. <laughs> right. Well, no, it's going to cost more than that the second year and thereafter. Mm -hmm. But ever, but obviously, towns are going to decide whether or not, at the end of the day, it it turned out to be yeah. worth it. That makes sense. And if you had some people that don't participate, then you're. I get what you're saying here. So it shows like they're twelve thousand. Okay, so you do more. So twelve thousand. If, if those people stick, ten thousand. If more, eight thousand. So yeah, I get what you're saying. So, so the. Uh, The other thing to consider is that we are experiencing increasing costs for energy. And, and no matter what we do, one of the reasons for acting on climate change is to, at the end of the day, reduce energy costs and to make the town more resilient. Uh, that's, uh, and, and, and by assisting low income members of the community and so on and so forth, we, uh, everybody, you know, yeah, costs go down. Yeah. yeah. Lindley, why don't you go ahead? Um, yeah, I have two things. One's a comment and then one's a question. Um, the comment would be maybe for Jean or for Scott. Uh, Jean, you mentioned that the towns that have done this sort of consortium model have seen savings. Can you request from Two Rivers to see what those numbers look like? I think whether it's to the select board or whether this goes in front of the voters, um, that sort of data would be really vital to be able to answer some of these questions. Um, and then the second, uh, you might not know the answer to, but I'm just kind of curious in terms of the role of this individual, um, I've heard mention of sort of grant writing and maybe grant administrating um, and sort of thinking creatively about um, the cost of this and sort of the, the ultimate cost of this, not just to the individual towns, but maybe to the overall consortium. Is there an opportunity, because often when you write a grant, the grant writer 
writes in a piece about grant administration. And so part of the grant is actually funding their time to do the work of the grant. And if that could be, um, if, if in fact, let's say they write a, a grant for the consortium, maybe some of that cost goes towards the pool to lower the cost for the entire consortium. But also if they write a grant for a specific town, like Bethel is replacing the town garage and they write a grant and they get a grant towards this end to do some of that work, could that offset some of the cost towards Bethel? And so it would just be interesting to me to know a little bit more about that type of capacity within this role and what's allowed or not allowed. You know, Two Rivers might come back and say, that's not how it works. That would go towards our overhead. Or they might say, yeah, actually, they we can write that in and then it becomes a, a way to lower costs. And obviously, again, we can't know this year to year, but if that's sort of in the thinking, I think that that could become a selling point for this model. Question I can ask, I assume that information is available. Um, I, I don't know how, how guarded it is. Um, and again, we don't know what we don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if there are grants to help pay for this person's work, as you mentioned, but again, we don't know what we don't know. And again, every little, every little town trying to do this on their own. And uh, it's great because it's free volunteer work, but it it's it's not very efficient. Um, and that's why that's why the committee, um, we're going to continue doing our thing regardless of what you guys want to do. We just want you to, we want, we support this. And because um, we think it's, I think at the end of the day, it's going to benefit the town. Um, but we can't guarantee that. And the proof will be at the, it's when we're done. But I strongly believe the town will be better off for it. All right. Well, we can. And we still have some more time. We have. Um, and four more meetings before we have to finish up our budget. So we'll have some I can throw opportunities to talk about that and see how our budget comes along with um, shapes up there. I can reach out to Two Rivers too to find out about the numbers. That way you don't have to. That way I can just find I'm out in the next packet. I just made a note to figure out what they have. I'd be interested to know what these other groups, they've done it for a couple of years now and, yeah. and what their actual payback is. Yeah, I'll see what I can get from Two Rivers and I'll forward it to you if, if, um, if I, they have is, numbers. Is Two Rivers doing the other groups? Yeah. I, don't, I knew they Two have Rivers them. is the other group. The person was actually a Two Rivers employee staffed at Two Rivers. Is it Harry? Yeah. Okay, I can not reach Harry, out. Not Harry. Not Harry. Um, no, it's fine. Uh, it's, it's not Harry. Uh, okay, I can find out who it is. I'll I'll message him and find out. I know you don't always enjoy the technology part, so I'll let you know what they say. I I, I digress a little, but it seems so. I looked at the town report, and we do not have a representative to Two Rivers. We, yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> so all right, I'll get the um, I'll get that number. I'll find out who it is. Okay. Ready. Well, thank you for coming out this evening. Yeah. Thank you for. for um, <laughs> you probably I don't know. We really didn't decide anything. We. So they're going to want to know what we what we did, and I guess it's on. Or we presented it. There you go. You presented. <laughs> so we took and, it under advice. And, and I know as much about. <laughs> what you're going to do as <laughs> as much as we're going to say. Hey. Yeah, so the specific questions that we need to do more research on include uh, what have been what has been the prior experience in terms of savings. Um, what more specific? Hold up. Hold up. The meeting or whatever. What if you and I sit down and regurgitate the meeting and make a report to the group? I, it's a it's a kind of a volunteer group that's trying to do this instead of holding them up. Does that work? 
I just want to make sure that we get recorded, you know, what it, what the questions are. And I hear them about deliverables. Well, I think, I think there's a lot of questions. I mean, I guess it depends on how long we want to talk about this tonight. Mm -hmm. I mean, just, I personally would have, I have dozens of questions in regards to this. And, and I don't think that you probably will sway me into this decision um, unless you expanded yeah. this role more being, you know, I, I think for a small town, I mean, we have six buildings in town, six. That's all we manage is six buildings. One of which is the school, which manages itself. And they have their own coordinator that does that does um, structural enhancements and, and all through the state. So that really brings us down to five, five, one of which is the rec facility, which really doesn't work all the time. You know, so we're, we're really, you know, what at the end of the day, what are we actually managing in town? And do we need a person to manage four buildings that, you know, maybe over a 30 year period, you're going to do some enhancements to four buildings. So, uh, <clears throat> so I guess, you know, just, it, again, we can go through this all night on. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to argue, but I'd like to add five because basically the school's budget is actually more than the town budget. So any money you save at the school basically saves the town money whether it comes out of the school budget or your budget it still saves the town money so i would include but the school i'm on the school board we're already 10 years ahead of the town we're, we're already doing energy efficiency things at the school that we're not doing at the town the, the school operates completely differently they might it's not even on town land school school we don't own the building you know it's its own identity um, so what i'm saying is at the end of the day, we could make suggestions to the school, but they do their own. They're, they're going to follow their own rules, and everything that they do comes from the state. So it's you know it's it's a different path to get there, but it's not not town related. So right. I guess you know at the end of the day, we're managing five buildings. So I mean, what how much energy project projects are we going to do in five buildings, um, or there of? So what would you know? If we're investing this kind of money, what is our payback? Not just on project wise, but if we did all the projects we want to do, what does that look like? What is the payback at the end? Other than saying that we're being better stewards of the earth, I mean, what is our actual payback? So, I mean, if if you and I are contributing money to this, what is our actual payback at the end of the day? 20 years, 40 years, 60 years down the road. I, I think that, you know, we got to have those answers. I mean, they're all great ideas, but what is it going to look like once we invest our money? Maybe our money's better tied up if we took thirteen thousand dollars a year and kept it locally, and we did little things in town. Maybe, maybe we get more out of it. I don't know, but I just, <clears throat> I think, you know, and we need to know the commitment of our neighbors. I don't think any of us wants to get get full steam ahead into this and and not know that Randolph's not on board or Royalton's not on board. So. But we can go. We can go all night on this because everybody's got their own opinions. True. And just because we have opinions doesn't mean that we're not, you know, we're anti-climate people. We're, you know, we look at things a little differently. That's we all. Also have to ask what happens if we do nothing. And if we do nothing, we all go down the tubes because of what's going on in or the not. climate. And and it's. Um, I'm not saying make a decision tonight, but I am trying to say it's not just about the dollars. There is an investment in the planet that must be made. And we hear that all the time, Gene, but nobody, nobody, nobody will do it. Not on the world, not, not in the United States or any other country will tell you exactly what you're going to get once you invest this money, Gene. This is the question. Now, everybody is panicking because we're all, you know, the world's coming to an end and we need to go do all this. But nobody is telling us at the end of the day that when you take the greenhouse gases, which are such a small component of the overall atmosphere, and Bethel is a micro dot, what are we actually getting out of that, right? What are we getting from that? I think that's the question we need to ask ourselves when we're going to, you know, we're going to go into a tight year again where everything's going up. Inflation is running rampant. And we're going to have to go to people and say, we need another penny because we want to 
we want to put this coordinator position together that we don't even know what's going to come out of it. Right? I mean, I think we have to be. We've spent a year and a half trying to answer that question. We have given you deliverables. We have a job description. We have shared that. We have done, well. I think the answer is on the table right now that no other board is committed to this. That's correct. If this was such a because dire thing, we are in the process. Somebody on this sheet would be committed, and not a single person is committed yet. Not one. This is a part of the process. We've, they've gone to other towns, and we have they have the same reaction that you do, and we'll try to get the answers. But we want we'll I'll try to get as many answers as I can, and we'll be back. Just to, but they're whatever I. I got a plug-in car. I get 78 miles per gallon of gas that I use. I'm saving money and um, whatever. I, I'm a believer. I'm just uh, from my own experience. My insulated house cost me my height with my solar panels cost me $300 a year for my heat and electricity. I don't know why that can't be expanded to the towns. And I, I think the sooner the sooner you start to pay back the better it is. That's my my feeling. But anyway. I'll reach out to Two Rivers and, and uh, see what we can get for some information. And I will try to get as many answers as yeah. I can. Well, I'll let you know what I hear from Two Rivers. I'll okay. send them an email. So and let and uh, if I when I get an answer, I'll forward it to you. I, I'm happy. Okay. Thank yeah. you. We appreciate you coming. So all right. Did uh Lindley or Dave, did you guys have anything more? I could I could go with you, Chris. We could talk all night. There's and I guess my first my <clears throat> biggest comment is we've already got monies that we need to spend. Uh, we have the Sand Hill project. We have our ERAP money. We have the town garage. We have things we have to spend. Uh, so you add this extra penny on, and I don't know. Is it the uh, straw that breaks the camel's back? I don't know that answer. And as far as needing a $140,000 person to get to what is most energy efficient out there for our construction or whatever, I'm in the trades and I am bombarded constantly by people who want to sell me the better, best, new energy efficient quality items, whether, and I'm an electrician and electrical stuff, heating stuff, plumbing stuff. Those guys are all out there pushing their product. So, while I agree that we need to do something, I'm not sure that what we're talking about is what we need to do right now. Okay. All right. Thanks, Dave. Lindley, did you have anything? I'd... Okay. All right. So, like, like I said, we have, uh, I think, what four more meetings? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll we may have the budget kind of special... completely. I think together special budget meeting i can't remember i have a i have a um and we'll, we're trying to arrange with the fire chief for this week and the public works which is the bigger portion listers i can kick out i mean i can kick out a bunch of the budget in a couple of days or we'll have we'll have four more board meetings where we'll be talking about everything and the budget and we'll have at least one budget um informational meeting so Absolutely. there there'll be plenty of opportunities for uh, people to see the full budget and as well as expand on certain items in the budget if if you know if there's a, a need for it yeah. or an ask for it yeah and and there there's also there's other ways of putting things on the warning too so um just in case that um, if nothing else if we can't get it done this year it would be nice to at least have a a what do you call it a, a poll god knows we don't have enough now mm -hmm. but to see what people think and at town meeting or something you could the energy committee could do an exit poll so that or a, a little poll that people could take um you could work with the town clerk about that to see if people want to answer they, like i'm sure the town's people want the same answers that you do yeah so probably. so anyway. but it's but it's still a way to do it yep all right My understanding is the town has a vote to take action on energy it was a non-binding resolution several years back my understanding is that it's also in the town plan that this board has adopted. 
that we should but be not asking. Specific, uh, not, yeah. spe not specifically how. No. That's, I think, and I, think that's, I think we're at that point now. But anyway, I, this I don't want to keep going any later than you need to. Okay. All right. So we will move from uh, this conversation to the public comment. So if there's anything public comment that wasn't on the agenda this evening, uh, now's the chance. So I'll look online first before in person. So, Paul? Hi, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Nope. Okay. Hey, just a couple <laughs> of things. Uh, good to be back. It's uh, been a couple of meetings that I haven't been able to be there, but things are looking good. I um, want to thank everybody for their good vibrations and well wishes and everything. Um, and I want to congratulate Jean on the window dressers project. Um, seems like it really has a, a positive impact on the folks in, in the region. And it's good to see Dave back. I'm sure that's just cranberry juice he's got there. Um, <laughs> but it's good to see him back and active too. So, um, Thank you. It's been a, been a little while, but I'm glad to be back. All right. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Uh, anybody in person that isn't here for an agenda item that may want to speak now? Forever hold your peace. Okay. So we'll move off of uh, public comment. Um, and we had at the last uh, meeting, we had... Um, some citizens that had come to the public comment um, piece that kind of talk about um, some of the issues that we have in and around town on various different things. And, and, you know, as a, as a town, uh, well, of course, um, some of those issues are easy and some are much difficult to deal with. Uh, and we had, you know, we said that we'll be talking about our budget and, and when we go through the budget, we're always analyzing, you know, what's working, what's not working. Right. Um, so policing um, was going to be uh, another discussion point coming into the budget season on, you know, what is our options currently, what we're doing, is it working, is it not working, um, and then what may be our, our options. So I guess tonight was kind of starting that conversation of, you know, I think we all can kind of agree, feel free to if I speak out of line, um, board members, but it, you know, it sounds like that we've, we've really tried hard, um, <laughs> with the constable, um, uh, end of policing. And, and for many years in, in our small community that the constable worked out fairly well. Um, and, and maybe some of that was situational because, you know, we had a, a unique resource that we could share with other towns and, and, and we did have kind of an individual or two that were in and around our town and some neighboring towns on, you know, what we'll call a more full-time basis more often. And, um, and then, you know, a couple of years ago when, when it, you know, the labor force in general <laughs> um, started having struggles as well as uh, policing, um, it became very difficult for us to, um, fill the hours and, and the commitment that the board had made to the townspeople, which was seeing a 20 hours a week commitment of, of having some type of um, enforcement um, out there if that's speeding or, you know, being seen or other things. Um, last year, we, we had looked through some options. Um, so at that time, and over the years, anyways, just to back up, I mean, our constable budget, I think, you know, six years ago was like fifteen thousand dollars. So, and and now we're just under sixty. So we're yeah. um, so we have grown that um, over the last few years, and some of that has been just the budget wasn't realistic. Some of it was you know the cost to have an individual it costs more, just like any other job out there right now it pays more. Um, and then last year we started talking about you know we're not getting the commitment of the hours because our two constables that we have are needed elsewhere. So they have full-time jobs and, and both of their identities are shorthanded. So any overtime it used to be pretty much, they'd come to Bethel to do overtime. And, and now they're, they don't have the time available to come to Bethel and do overtime. And, and last year we, we paid 
kind of kind of on the low end of the, yeah. of the pay scale, actually below the low end of the pay scale. So last year, what we tried to do as a board was let's raise that up so that we could maybe entice them to want to come uh, and do some hours, uh, which which I think has made it more enticing. But at the same time, I think their commitments are elsewhere. Um, and so I think at, at this point that the constable end of things for us is not working. Um, and it's no fault of trying because we definitely yeah. have tried and we've tried different, different ways of, of doing it. Uh, but it, it, we're just kind of in a different time where it's nobody can get help. And if they did get help, they're going to go probably to a full-time place where they can get full benefits and full pay and, um, and I think the days of finding that unique person is probably over unless yeah. you, know, you happen to have one. Yeah. Um, so at this point is kind of what do we do as a community to, um, to validate our commitment that we made to the town or that the town's individuals had asked for uh, years ago uh, when we had done some polling. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it really at this point, our options are, um, you know, going to a full-time person in the town um, or going to um, having the sheriff's department do uh, do some work in the town um, that, and we talked about this last year and we, and the reason why we steered away from it is you know, full-time, if you have full-time commitment in your own town. So if, um, for years when I got on the board, everybody used to say, we don't want a police department. That's the last thing we want, right? So we want to keep it small, keep it in-house, but small. And the challenge we've gotten to the point now is nobody wants to come and do part-time help. So we'd have to go full-time somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. um, but, the, but the difficulties as being a town is if you go to a full-time, then you start having to pay retirement and benefits mm -hmm. and it gets very expensive. At the same time, we don't really have the infrastructure to house a police department person full time. Um, and then it comes with a lot of liability and a lot of training and a lot of behind the scenes stuff that just mm -hmm. towns, you know, we're talking about an energy coordinator, but I mean, we have one individual <laughs> yeah. that is the, you know, the water head, the public works head. I mean, yeah. so then you would have to be the police department head and, yeah. and, and we just really don't, it's kind of almost, no. And to that just, option's almost not there. So I think that's a true statement. And to just say, as I came from a town where I did oversee a police department, and you're talking building with a Sally port and, and liability, here's an understatement. I won't tell you how many times we had to go to court and just it it's it's difficult because you currently, as a town manager, I don't have time to oversee a police department because to do that, you have to make sure that that person has to be trained and there is very specific regulations. The Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council has taken that over. And I did, um, I do want to just say too, I already talked to the current commander of the state police barracks, the lieutenant there, and he's he doesn't have time. He said, I got people working doubles. I can't take on a contract. So the option for Bethel is the Windsor County Sheriff, or as Chris said, bringing somebody in, which I'll go publicly on the record as saying, I am not in favor of that as a person who's overseen a police department. Until you do it, you don't fully understand the the commitment of time and uh, liability that it opens you up to. At least with the Sheriff's Department, if you're to contract, then you're basically li transferring that liability to somebody else. It's their responsibility to make sure their officers adhere to all the state statutes and have all the proper training and like, you know, and all that certification. So, um, and uh, so. So I think at this point, what we're kind of starting to talk about is it seems like the, the, the identity to, to be the best option is probably the sheriff's department. And, and then there's different options inside the sheriff's department of what services that they can offer us. And I think that's kind of where we, in my opinion, kind of where we start the conversation is, yeah. Um, if we do want to go uh, to the sheriff's department direction, which it sounds like is probably in our best benefit, um, how do we want that to look like? And we've started to talk with the newly elected um, um, sheriff from Windsor County. We talked to him last year. He we gave did. us some stuff and some some things. But last year, things were up in the air because, um, you know, it was a new there he was, was a, there was a yeah. bunch of new sheriffs in the area. Yeah. So they didn't know, like, are they going to be taking on this? And this was, you know, people mm -hmm. were leaving, people were coming. So now it's a little more stable to kind of know what they have to work with. Um, 
so it, it seems like there's kind of three options for us at this point. And two of the options are a little tricky because they, they use the term full-time in both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so the first option would be, you know, do we take our current budget? Do we take our current budget or maybe with some slight modifications and and the, have the sheriffs come in for that amount of money? So just making it up. If if we have a one. if we have a sixty thousand dollar budget, you know, option one would be increasing it to like sixty five thousand, which isn't a drastic increase, but that would provide services like 12 to 16 hours saying, yeah, 18 to 22 of dedicated so what that would be it was they could come in as a sheriff and kind of give us the service that we thought we were getting with um, our constable so that 18 to 20 hours a week of service so that might be you know it might be one day of patrol one day or half a day one day or you know that type of deal like what we thought we were getting um plus they'd give us 12 to 16 hours a day in in um basically on call for an additional 12 to 16 hours a day for that price tag so for 65,000 you get 18 to 22 hours of dedicated patrol mm -hmm. and then they would deal with calls for service between 12 and 16 hours a day mm -hmm. so for it, the 65,000 he gives you like so four it, options it, like, it, one you cannot afford the, <laughs> the law enforcement <laughs> web is Okay. Okay, sure. So the cameraman, if you didn't hear that, is uh, changing batteries. So we're going to take like a 15 to 20 second break. <laughs> Get your popcorn, because I wanted to clarify what his, um, he uses the term, uh, you know, his service calls for service. So I was trying to make sure I understood Good. what we're talking about. So right, some of the... <laughs> and hopefully I'm not going to confuse you, but it, it's confusing. So when 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 we say like the dedicated hours, that's kind of like what we think we're getting with our constable right now, right? Or what we signed up for. The things that, but we also right now, Bethel takes for granted the other coverage times. So other coverage times means when the constable isn't on duty, then the callouts go to Vermont State Police, Okay. Now, what gets tricky is when you when you get the sheriff's department involved is not to say that you don't get coverage if you call in a non hour but they if you have coverage to them, then certain call outs go to them. So yeah. so now like we we just kind of always fell under the umbrella of VSP. So now if we went that direction, that they would also have to field some of those call outs during certain hours. So like, it wouldn't necessarily be VSP responding. Like, like we, you know, for so long, we just kind of just have taken that for granted that, you know, we call and yeah. if Oscar is not on VSP comes. Right. So that's but not, not so much now. So that's so short. So that's staff. the tricky thing. So yeah. that if you go with the sheriff's department or another identity, those call outs then go to the sheriff's department. So it isn't necessarily go to VSP. So, so sometimes where he says, we're going to dedicate you that say 20 hours, but then they'll say, then we're also going to give you 12 to 16 hours of call out time. So that's where it kind of gets tricky. Cause it's not to say that you're not going to have coverage, but it, it gets a little messy, but you're going to have more coverage than you have right now. Well, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I think <laughs> option one, hours. option one. And this is law enforcement. This is not constable which is a different, it's a different animal. Right. Well, it's actually not a different animal well, for you I, in I, Bethel. Well, actually it's not an because animal you, at all. So. Because you voted as a select board to give the constable police power within your town. It could be different if you had not voted to do that. But right. since you had voted to do that, mm. and he is a police officer. But if you're right though, if he hadn't, if you hadn't voted to give him police power, you're right. It would be right. a totally different animal. But so let me just get through the options. So the first option would would basically do the hours that we think that we're getting or want to have wanted to see to date. The second option is what, you know, we start using the word full time. So full time can be tricky. So full time, you know, is you know, in full time is is usually in that 30 to 40 hours a week time time frame. So that would be for the most part somebody that would be in town for 
six to eight hours a day, every day. Um, and, and the calls. For and, and that bumps up. So that, you know, that's like $100,000 a year to have. <clears throat> we're calling it full time. And then there's the, because you get tricky with the VSP and the call outs <laughs> and all this stuff. Then there's the true full, full time, full time, which means no matter what happens, the sheriff's department is coming. Okay. Um, which that is because then they have to dedicate more resources for that 24 yeah. hour period. Then it becomes what, you know, true full time, 24 hour, seven, which is a lot. Yeah. Um, well, so it bumps 40. up, bumps up quite a bit. So yeah. 40 is 125,000 and then a dedicated 24 seven patrol year round is over half a million. So the, the tricky, the other thing that so. we have to, yeah, the other thing other than money, what we also have to think about is currently the constable serves two roles. Well, a couple different roles, but two main roles, which is, you know, doing enforcement out there um, as well as animal control. So if we did go away from the sheriff's department, we then would have to figure out what we're going to do for animal control wise, um, because you would still have to find a person to do animal control, um, which I don't even know. We didn't even look into that. Yeah. But. Well, we, we budgeted for it at one point, but yeah, because the sheriff's office, I don't believe is going to do that. So you basically yeah. get a dog catcher. So that, that's Becky. How many animal control calls realistically do we get? Is that something that happens that frequently? Yeah, you'd be surprised. It, your, it, your dog is barking and your neighbor doesn't want to talk to you. So your neighbor calls. Yeah. No. So people... There. <laughs> yeah, so people or the cows call, or whatever. And if people, yeah, if if somebody's dog bites, then obviously the health officer gets involved, and it can be, right. and it can be the cop. Yes, if someone has a stray, I have a motto: leave it alone, and it will go home. But if somebody picks up a stray in the jurisdiction in the town of Bethel, then they take it to the hospital. Then that costs us yeah. money to go to the animal hospital. But you'd be surprised. Um, and it's not that we have to intervene a lot, but there are quite a few phone calls about their neighbor's dog being a quote unquote nuisance dog. But so it, it's, it's, it's funny. It's like anything. It comes in. I mean, we streets. could, oh, we, we, <clears throat> could. Have to hire we could and should get the information from Oscar of yeah yeah how I many, how many calls a year does, does he get on that? And my guess is probably sporadic. You know, you might have yeah. a hot week and then nothing for a month. Yeah, you know, exactly. deal, so it's true. Um, yeah, I lived in Bethel for 30 yeah seven years and i've known of one right and he didn't even come out yeah they were like well yeah it's you know we get all the calls but it's definitely something that we have to uh we would have to deal with as a board so we would you know go to a you'd have to budget an appointment for for an animal catcher um which would typically come with some sort of stipend I would oh imagine. absolutely yeah um, an hourly rate or kind of like a, a, a health officer type deal mm -hmm. so yeah. yep the tickets that get written in Bethel for speeding or other offenses is there is there a percentage that comes back to Bethel yep so it actually kind of makes money for the town a very well, very very <laughs> small yeah percent. because yeah. the state gets the majority and now if he writes if the if the officer is writing tickets on a state highway the money all goes to the state yeah. but we get a small percentage of the tickets that they write um once it goes to the state and um because the state keeps their share mm -hmm. and then we get so no I think it that, doesn't that <laughs> it one, doesn't work like i mean does it offset but it's it's piddly really I mean, I think not at worth one, thinking about at one time we had figured out that if if our constable was on duty 20 hours a week and uh i can't remember how many tickets it was over the course of it but it, it was like $1200 a year in ticket revenue so it yeah. wasn't wasn't really a whole lot to even explore on and no. and it really not something that you budget for you know what i mean yeah. but a few um, years ago, it, but, you could. You, yeah. In another town, we contracted with Addison County Sheriff, and they were making their money in tickets. But then the yeah. state changed it, and then so now they get a higher percentage. The other thing too about going to a situation where you contract with, say, the Windsor County Sheriff, you do you can take advantage of other programs, as you all have seen. Um, 
Royalton police or Randolph police or somebody in a district where you were or a town you were surprised to see them in. They're most likely participating in like click it or ticket or different programs Governor like highway that. Stuff. Governor highway safety programs and that the sheriff's office can participate in. So what happens is sometimes you get a little extra coverage in your town mm. because they're participating in a program which gives them points. Mm. They used to give you cash. Now it gives you points towards equipment. So there are some benefits to going with a large organization because as a constable, Oscar was able to participate at one point, but we had to go through the Rutland County Sheriff's Office and it was a whole mm -hmm. thing. And um, so sometimes you do get a little, you know, bump and, in your coverage. And when Teresa and I did talk with the sheriff last year, um, he did acknowledge that if if we were a sheriff town, then then it would come with some of those caveats. Like, you know, he would be able to use some of his... Um, regional money in our town as well so you know make it up if we went with 20 hours a week for sixty five thousand dollars a year that we'd probably see them a little bit more than 20 hours a week because they would do some of their other you know um governor's safety council money and things like that that they would spend in in our area as well so i also think that just from experience when you see that um the term that police officers like to use and i was just flying the colors so i think that because bethel has been with with such limited constable hours for so long that if you do contract with the sheriff and you start the first year, you say, okay, the first year we're going to do the 65,000 and then we'll reevaluate. How's it going? How do people like, it? how do we, you know, and then maybe the next year you decide, okay, we want more. Or we're happy with this or whatever. The good thing that happens all of a sudden is now people realize that you have contracted with somebody and they see the cruisers now. So they see the sheriff department, sheriff's department in your town. So I think there's a lot to be said for just, you know, flying the colors, just seeing the cruisers in town, it, it does curb some behavior because all of a sudden there is a presence. So you've gone from basically nothing to something. So all of a sudden people are in town, you know, 20 hours a week, people really notice that, especially people who maybe are doing something wrong. And so they're looking for the police. Mm -hmm. So, so I, and speaking of cruisers, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have to have all the maintenance and upkeep no, on exactly. our own that cruiser. Was, plus we have our cruiser. And we, too. And right. we budget so for that. Our current currently. budget of 65,130 and mm -hmm. subtracted the $8,000, which we use for signage, like buying the yeah. speed lights or the, the speed dollies, et cetera. Then they, we basically have a $57,130 budget true budget that we spend on policing or we haven't spent and the other thing too is if you decided to contract with the sheriff he could start before july 1 mm -hmm. he's because we have spent only in salary we've only spent twenty five hundred dollars out of the twenty nine thousand dollar budget he's willing to pick up ours mm -hmm. um to so we could use we could start sooner and we could you know my thing would be we would want the right to ask for some Targeted and, and I think, areas, but and then I think as a community, we kind of need to figure out exactly what is it that we want within their, you know, control. What is it that we want them to do for us, right? So, and I think I think looking at this list, I mean, I think what Therese said makes a lot of sense. Of you know, do we start whatever? Do we start with our budget, give them some time, and then we can build it over time? But looking at it, I, I guess my opinion would be is if we if we just did the 20 hour a week thing, which is our current budget, I think what you're going to see for the most part is more or speed enforcement, but not not much of that community feel to it. And I, and I would say we probably would have to get to more closer to a 32 we'll use that full time to actually do some of the more indirect uh practices of you know dealing with other individuals that may be a problem that aren't speed related um mm -hmm. i mean right. you know right, so yeah. so trying to work with some of those i think you need kind of more of a yeah a fuller time individual that can be seen and you know yeah. people will build some trust in and even if and you things start like that. with option one and you have 18 to 22 hours you still get that call for service between 12 and 16 hours a day so you still have more coverage and i think it just be a shock to the system to see a cruiser becky has a question i'll say what we know we're looking for is that call out because I have called and spoken to the Vermont State Police no. many times. They know our area of East Bethel yep. very well, and they do not come. Mm -hmm. They do not follow up. Yep. They do not call you back. Yeah. There is no policing effectively in 
my area. And I know the crimes are not the great train robbery that I'm talking about. It's property crime. A lot of the time it's not, they're not stealing the car out of the yard. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, people are certainly trying. Yeah. Um, but it makes you feel unsafe in your own home. It I can makes understand you that. Feel unsafe about your own property. It's very frustrating when you work really hard to make your property something, and someone comes despite no trespassing signs and destroys it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can't get any help. And it's true because you're right. I mean, I'm a little bit familiar with your area yeah. and your neighbors, and uh, oh, yeah. so one of the issues with the VSP is, is he, you know, was very honest. Lieutenant said, I've got people working double shifts during the week. And I think you're right. Is that sometimes it's, you know, they are in constant triage mode yes. and, 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 and it's unfortunate and it doesn't make it right that you're not getting the service you deserve, but you're right. I think call out is important. And I was happy to see that he'd included that in his options. And it would be interesting in my mind to see if you, started with you know option one and had the call outs and you start at the sixty five thousand and if people are really happy with that and support it because you know not everybody wants to see more police <laughs> and then next year you go to the you know if people are really happy with it you stay where or then you do you go to the hundred thousand it's kind of hard to go from fifty seven thousand to a hundred grand knowing that you know, our health insurance premiums just went up and all these other things that we're going to be budgeting for um are are coming at the same time and um but you deserve Bethel residents deserve coverage and you deserve to feel safe in your home and so I think it's and I, and I think you know, we got put a number in the budget for sure and we have you know every town's got the same things going on but oh. you know I think you have the the regional issue right which is you know the things that we're seeing around the state um which you know which are a problem with drugs and and things like that um, and then we have the, you know, in our community where let's say you did have a individual that's out there 20 hours a week, right? At least with a presence, you know, it will deter some behaviors, right? But I think where we've gotten right now is with no presence, right? I mean, it becomes a wild frontier, right? Um, so, you know, I think as a community, we just got to kind of figure out where we want that bar at do it like you know where do we want to start and it, not nothing against the sheriff's department but you know we've never used them before so you know we could we could get the cadillac and roll it in the town and find out that uh this is definitely not what we thought it was going to be or, or you know what i mean so like do we do we start small and go big do we do we go big and hope that we signed up the right person you know what i mean because because we're limited. We don't really have many yeah. options. You but know? it's kind of the nice thing about the sheriff's department is you, I'm not sure if you'd get the same person every time, either you would. And you'd I think you said that you would establish, kind of establish a, a local report. individual. Yeah. yeah. It, was, um, it may not seem personal today, but you know, mm -hmm. maybe two people that are dedicated to, so that we know, you know they know the usual people in town and I think the people that wouldn't be happy to see the police in town are the ones breaking the law. Oh, absolutely. Sure. absolutely. Nobody's obeying the law going, wow, I wish they weren't around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you see too, sometimes it's the long-term Bethel residents sometimes who are, they've never needed it. So I think for them, sometimes it's, you know, but when you need it, you need it to be there. But um and, I mean, and, and I know well, I think there's do. a lot of people flying with oh. well, no registration and no inspection. Oh, and it's yeah. fine because yeah. you know, I live here and it's, there's no doubt about that. How far does that go? And I know when we, we haven't, <laughs> we haven't, Teresa and I really had, well, last year we sat down with the sheriff um, yep. for a couple hours and went through a whole discussion thing. Um, at that point, he told us if we went with just, you know, just some patrols, um, like the 20 hour a week type deal that it would probably be one or two different individuals in the region that would pick those up. And if we went to more of the full-time thing, then that he would have one individual that would be dedicated to your area. Doesn't necessarily mean they live in Bethel. They might live two towns away or three towns away, but right. they would, they would be your person. Um, but just set a curious. Oh, I'm just going to I'm tickled to death being a North main street resident. <laughs> I'm tickled to death that you're doing anything about <laughs> As, as you all know, yep. everybody knows on North Main Street for years, um, 
the law is being broken multiple times a day, <laughs> seven days a week, doesn't take a break for nights, days, whatever, and just the traffic with no mufflers at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> All of that shit. You don't even know. <laughs> and it's been going on for well, yeah. I've known I've known a person since they were little, and now he's in his thirties, and um, so it's well over ten years mm -hmm. of con constant law breaking, yeah. and nothing has been done. I think that and, every and area so we have the same problem. Right? Any any yeah. any money you put towards it would make me happy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. I'm curious, Jordan, since you were here recently you know, on the 22 hour a week, you know, start at the 65,000 with on call of 12 to 16 hours a day. Um, there was someone else at the meeting who, you know, obviously it was kidding at the time saying that he didn't care if it was a million bucks, he'd, you know, support it. But how do you feel about starting at something like that? Or you really feel like um, that it's 32 hours or 40 hours or nothing or how far does that get us does that get us just sitting on main street and being there and yeah. you know grabbing the speeding calls and and registrations and mufflers and but they, the, they the state police know all of the all of the participants it's it's yeah. been Lots called in and, and and it's been it's been literally years mm -hmm. i would be happy with just a plastic uh, well, Cooper, a car that looks like a police car sitting in my yard. Yeah, traffic I mean, enforcement does yield a significant amount of drug busts. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, that's I mean, how they're a lot selling of it drugs happens. outside of the sandwich shop. Well, and Dave a, had to stop and call on the state. The state police stopped for a sandwich, and that's the only reason that he even had anything to do with it. But yeah. I mean, they're doing it on the side of the roads. They're doing it they're doing everywhere, it right and nobody's doing anything. Just, I mean, it exactly. could at least make them. A I mean, walking bit. into shell with no shoes on because you're so high, and yeah. and nobody's going to say a word. Yeah, is insane. It is insane, and I think too that unfortunately, um, and this is my opinion as a resident of another town, it's scarier now. I think there was a day when you would have confronted somebody back in the day. Some Denise would have been like, "Hey," but nowadays you think twice before you do that so but anyways we'll um and, and i think that's kind of where our conversation with our community needs to go is you know we have to understand that there are probably going to be some behaviors that that regardless of what we have for a presence we may not be able to fix uh at our level uh at the town level because you know um people's hands are tied or 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 the judicial system they, they get booked and they're back out eight hours later and they're doing the same thing right i mean the guy that was speeding through town that we just had the issue over the weekend, right? I mean, this guy is in and out all the time at, at these places and he just continues to do what he's doing. So so I think what, just so that we, I don't wanna say waste waste resources or money is I think we need to figure out is what what is exactly that we want to get out of this that is realistic, right? So um, obviously speed and, and other things that come around with vehicle enforcement sounds, Sounds like, mm -hmm. sounds like that is, and it, and it kind of sounds like from people that I've talked to and you guys tonight that we also want that individual to have the capability of the know and be able to do more things behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So, um, then just targeted patrols, you know, or, um, you know, if all of a sudden we have an issue on a road, maybe that individual could pay a little more attention on that road for some time or or if we have an issue at a store they can spend a little more time in the downtown or um <clears throat> so and those are things you can work out in the contract i mean I, i've signed contracts with with sheriff department we're mm -hmm. not here but in other towns where they say basically you give us the money but you have no say over what we're going to do so in this contract obviously we would want to have a caveat that we would be able to request targeted patrols for for gauge mm -hmm. and different you know different roads at different times saying look we've got a uh, but because we also know because we're the town we take the phone calls so at least we could say look we have a problem on north main street we have a problem on christian hill we have a problem on gauge and so that people that you know they can 
do it. And I think if people start seeing um, a sheriff on a regular basis, they're going to be surprised because obviously we have not had the ability to provide that. And, and I think one thing that I was kind of thinking about maybe the next step and Dave and Lindley, you guys um, feel free to jump in um, is at this point, it kind of sounds like as a board and a community that we are looking at putting the constable thing to bed and let's see what our options are with the sheriff's department. And maybe we don't actually know exactly which option fits us the best. But if we do feel that the sheriff's department is is the direction that we want to head in is and we have some sort of commitment from the board and, mm -hmm. you know, that that's the direction we're going is we could get the sheriff to come, and come to, to one meetings. of our board meetings here and maybe better. Well, one, I think maybe we as a community can talk to him about the issues we're having. Right. Um and then maybe based upon his options, he can kind of tell you what you would get, you know, X amount of hours. He might just say, hey, 20 hours, you're just going to get speed enforcement. And that's pretty much it. Or or if you go to 32 hours, then we can spend an extra 10 hours a week just being in and around the downtown or, or dealing with some of these pet projects that, that might need to be dealt yeah. with. Um, or he might be able to tell us and say, listen we are having this issue in every community and this here is an issue that we're trying hard, but we're just not solving, you know, Yeah. or just so at least we could hear from him. Cause you know, <clears throat> so then can you request him to come into the next meeting? Well, I can, I, I think Teresa and I can, we talk to him often indirectly. So I think we can, um, I can email message him and see when his, if his schedule fits one of our meetings coming up and we could talk about that and, and then we could probably put it more on the, Discussion could be more, you know, discussion with, mm -hmm. you know, Windsor County Sheriff, you know, in person type deal. Also, just keep in mind, he's going to be selling you a service. Well, so, yeah. <laughs> so, so let's let's just the five hundred and twenty five thousand right. dollar option is probably off the table. <laughs> so, you know, so, I don't even know how to make that work in the budget. Yeah, yeah I think so. Why? I think so. Well, on, I mean, yes, the speeding stuff and the people with yeah. no registration and no muffler is annoying, but it's follow through that's why the the like middle option because obviously the top option we can't afford that yeah. that's high in the sky yeah but the middle option is attractive to me even though yes it is more money because i want some every time i speak to the state police it's somebody different you never get the same person yeah and there seems to be turnover you don't even i had one at one point i had his text i could text him and i frequently was texting him game camera photos of illegal shit on our road and then he moved on or you don't know yeah. that. and so having the same person and having follow through and i think that's follow up so that when i report something's been vandalized or stolen from my yard even if it's not that there's someone who is going to pursue that and follow up with me to say look i looked into it this is what we're doing about it instead yeah. of it just going into the ether and there being no consequence. I think that goes to Jordan's point about having, you know, the same person or a couple of people coming. So you establish a rapport with them so they can say, listen, Becky, I realize they stole your garden home, but here's, this is low priority today. I'll get to it, but this is where we're at. You know what I mean? So at least he's, <laughs> you know, exactly kind of can prioritize. And I mean, I think it makes sense. Everybody needs to be comfortable with, with, um, because that's how they do their job. As people are comfortable with them and they establish rapport, then more people are going to go to them and say, hey, you know what? I heard about this. Mm -hmm. you know who's doing what? We know where they're doing it. Yeah. We have game cameras on the, like, and I you are not game cameras on my road. I, for two years, I had a picture of every car that went up and down that damn road and pictures of people doing illegal stuff. And only one time did they actually do anything about it. And it was when, one of the less unsavory neighbors had their two-year-old hanging out the window, not in a car seat. And all they did was went go and slap him on the wrist and that was it. Yeah. And, and unfortunately, Chris, uh, you know, Chris makes a good point about some of this is just beyond the purview. And if you spoke oh, to I don't, any law I don't enforcement, think we're gonna stop I think the drug problem. And no, I mean, if you spoke, exactly. If you spoke to any law enforcement officer, there's so much frustration. Oscar and I had a conversation about this a couple of weeks ago. He had a case he put a lot of work into, and then it just didn't go anywhere and he was like you know he's like they just let him out or they just gave him a slap on the wrist and and it's been and it 
and it's just as frustrating for police officers as it is for the rest of us. But but I can certainly reach out to Ryan and see what his did, schedule looks like. Did Dave or Lindley, um, do you guys have any anything that you wanted to add to it? So it sounds like, at least at this point, that we'd like to pursue the option of of um, the Windsor Sheriffs and at least make shocking. the commitment of having him come out having him come out and um, see us and uh, we can kind of tell him what we're facing and he can kind of tell us, maybe he can tell us more what service might fit us. I can't decide if Dave is waving or trying to flip somebody off. So, <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> so, no, so uh, I had to find a more relaxed place to sit my shoulders. Of course. Time. Anyway, I think we talked, you talked about $57,000 in a, uh, slot in the budget that's not being spent when you're talking to ryan maybe we could uh plug him in for a test drive yeah i see what, yeah with it exactly with the money that we haven't spent now and he is offered to do that and maybe i don't know what that how that which option that would fit or whatever but it would be nice to know what he could do with that money between now and July I want. Right. Yeah, I think he'd probably give us like a per hour price so I could crunch the numbers and say I have X amount of hours left in the budget between now and July 1st. And and then he could probably, you know, and Oscar could stay during that period of time or, you know, work out a couple of months or whatever um, works for Oscar, the select board or whatever we end up doing with the constable position, but he could supplement those hours was the offer that the sheriff made was to supplement the constable's hours. So we could definitely, um, obviously easy math for me to figure out what we have spent, what we're going to spend and, and uh, leave him that. And then he could tell us what, you know, what we'd get. Right. And, uh, and as far as I, I don't think, uh, not to take anything away from the downtown because they have their fair share, but the majority of the, um, crime that I know about, is not in the village. So we need that officer out in uh, rural Bethel. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and those are also, um, you know, when we talked to Ryan, um, the, sh the sheriff before, he had mentioned, you know, that, you know, that you can sit down, you know, if he had a contract with you, you can sit down with him periodically and you could change your approach, right? So if, if your approach, let's say, is, really uh we're having a lot of speeding in town and you really want him to dedicate service on getting the speed down right we could do that for a period of time and then it could be hey we got these two things that are going on on these rural parts of town you know they could spend a little more time doing that so i think and that usually would come through the direction of yeah. the town manager but you know that there there are those options that we can kind of direct them like these are the issues that we're having currently could yeah. you Right. Could you try and snuff those out for us? What's the um totally having a brain cramp? What is it that some neighbor I just said it neighborhood watch? Neighborhood. I would be curious to see if that's something that the sheriff would also, you know, I can help I'm establish. Gonna, yeah, could he help establish a neighborhood watch that might help him? That's something I could ask him as well. We did that on North Main Street about ten years ago. Did it work? Or help? I was no. going to say it. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely not, not, whatever. But I think that, you know, the neighborhood watch is really meant to you know, you report back to the law enforcement what you're seeing, right? It happens. Yeah. But I yeah. do think, first of all, put more money in, whatever you got to do, but having somebody get a ticket for speeding on North Main Street, <laughs> what a, what a, yeah, no. or, or a, a defective muscle. Just so it doesn't take but about three times and the locals will know, you know, there's somebody watch. They'll know. And so maybe at least they'll slow the hell down a little yeah. bit and maybe not be so open to just driving up with their, their car falling mm -hmm. apart. I was shoveling today and this one went up, got this thing and his, his muffler was <laughs> dragging down to and his sparks flying and today figure how much that whatever it's the point is I, I, 11th. I, oh, oh the 11th yeah so i can 
So our next meeting is on the 11th. So we'll see if maybe we can get them lined up for the 11th. But just to have, you know, anything. And one last thing, I'm sure you've thought about it, but it seems every day you look in the paper, all these towns had the same problem. Do you guys talk to each other? Yeah. And say, can we, can we do something together? Yeah, I actually had a nice conversation with a town manager and, and, in and Randolph again, when they were recently, because, you know, imagine that all of a sudden you have a full police force in Orange County, the sheriff changes and you got nada with a very with a 24 hour notice everybody's gone i felt very bad for trevor as they were scrambling and he and i had talked and, and then of course you know everybody floods but we uh had talked about seeing about something regional and and, and i will say to you i've been in the business a long time we've been talking about regional fire departments regional police for a long time mm -hmm. and um but uh, and maybe that will eventually come to fruition. I know the VSP is trying not to pick up a lot of town contracts because they want towns to get sheriffs and they or have patrols and or have their beef up their own departments if they have them, because that's what they're looking for. Because like anyone else, they're you know nobody appears to be running out to be a police officer nowadays. So so why don't we? Um, we'll try to get Ryan to come the next meeting, the sheriff. Yeah, we'll put this back on for the eleventh. Yeah, assuming we can I get can him to come. I'll ask him. I think what I'm hearing from last week and their last meeting and this one is that the town is looking for an increased police presence that that has some teeth in it. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I've lived with this for years, right next to my house. I, I know, right, my bedroom. I could whatever for years. I I've deal. I can deal with that. But what's really scaring me is these people shooting each other, and and somebody's really going to get hurt. And I don't worse. care if they shoot each other. That'd be great. But I'm afraid they're going to take. Doesn't some always work that way, way, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's that's the part that scares. And, and I me. said it at the last that's meeting, great. and you know. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to solve the issue here in Bethel. However, I mean, some of the decision makers that do have a hand in solving some of these issues, two of them live in this town. So, you know, feel free to express these issues you're having with enforcement, law enforcement, or lack thereof, or judicial yeah. lackadaisical <clears throat> with your legislators, because they yeah. have, they vote on all this stuff. They, I mean... Um, and we're fortunate to have two individuals in our town that represent us in two different ways. And they, and when they're in Montpelier, they should be yeah. bringing this and saying, listen, yeah. listen, the drug activity is out of control or the users are out of control. And because of the users, we're now we're having gun violence and other stuff and uh, breaking into houses now. And, and I mean, it's just, hard. it's getting out of hand and it's because we've gone to such a soft method of, enforcement in the state and that and that is directly Montpelier and and I, I think you know the more that we you know myself included if we have issues we should call them and say listen these are the issues we're having yeah um and you know and unfortunately we're only going to be able to solve maybe a small portion of what we really want to solve but yeah you know, we've had so you have senator form. mccormick and representative kirk white and you can get their contact information right off the legislative we've website got north main street's contact actually dick set up on one porch and watched the trades go on oh cool. i mean it isn't like they don't know and haven't been, been well, informed and kirk lives on christian hill Right, yeah. but it's a matter of and, and, But yeah. their hands are tied too. And, well, they're not. I mean, they well, have to go and vote, and they have well, to try to vote. In in, they're the favor. ones that establish the policies that you know. It, and it, every community is dealing with us. And oh, you know, yeah. I was watching the TV last night. Not that it was a big surprise, but they were talking about how you know holiday shoppers are avoiding uh, Church Street. Well, surprise. I, I mean, I, I mean, did you yeah. did you you know? I'm not but I mean. All of the all of the communities are being affected in one way or another, and and uh, you know I know a lot of them want to make us try to figure it out ourselves, but the things is we're we can only do so much, yeah, right? Um, I mean, if it was up to me, I'd go door knocking and get everybody tonight, but <laughs> but they don't unfortunately let us do that. So yeah, I think that so, that's what Kevin Geiger from Two Rivers was saying at the last meeting was you know Chelsea. Corinth, there's a yeah. lot of small towns smaller than us really that are having, having it tough. really bad yeah. problems as well. Well, it was Burlington safe space that got made so they could test their heroin and, and get used clean needles. That's voted in Montpelier and they're 
our tax money's paying for the needles and the test kits for the heroin. I know. Right. It's crazy. And that and that's why I say those are those are things that are directly related to our legislators, right? I mean, they vote on that or don't vote on that, right? That's um I mean it definitely feels it's not like drugs are new in this area. It's not even like not. half the people in our area that are dealing them are new, but there does seem to be an escalation in violence and just how scary it feels mm -hmm. because it feels like the people using are perhaps more desperate, more yeah. unpredictable. The It's not even just the people who are dealing, it's the people who are then coming to partake and that they are potentially more desperate. When you see them walking up and down a world road <laughs> past your house with a, you know, and they look scary oh. and you know that if, if if they don't find other means to feed their habit and they get desperate enough they're unpredictable and like i'm home alone and i think all, all, all day a lot of days and it's hard too because i think that without any police coverage and, and i would say this in any town that people become emboldened yes. because yeah. you know so i i do think that there's as i said earlier there's something to be said about flying you know showing the colors and yeah. having regular patrols. I do think that that alone does help deter some, but, but certainly targeted patrols is definitely mm -hmm. what what's needed too. So, so, so we'll, but, so we'll, 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 we'll try our best to get um, the sheriff think, lined up for the yeah, next I'll board see meeting. What schedule looks like. Um, we have the, our two meetings in December are back to back the 11th and the 18th. Cause uh, we moved the, um, we the holiday meet meeting, Christmas. yeah. I mean, want to meet on Christmas this year, so um, I know, I know, we didn't think it'd be a very good turnout, so um, so we will we will put that together and and hopefully we can get some more information on that, yeah. So, so certainly, um, you know, the select board packet if you have any questions about the minutes or that sort of information, or you know, call and we answer, we talk to you, and uh, so just kind of unless anybody has anything else on the board. Mm -hmm. Uh, moving forward, we have the update to, it seems like it's forever, but um, these things definitely take a while as our July flood report. Did that help you, Gene? You wanted a spreadsheet, so I tried to yeah. give you a spreadsheet so you could see all the damage. And is North Main, is that extremely good? Um, no, North Main was North Main and Findlay was there Findlay. Is no Findlay Bridge on the whole list. Oh, geez, really? It must be, that could have been, I had a separate sheet <laughs> i think really? that one's got its own sheet yeah, i think well, it I, might have i have yeah, a period well it's, it's a spreadsheet with multiple tabs and i wonder if i just didn't frame one so let me just see dang i thought i hit every one there's p vine and north main had two piddly ones yeah. and then there's Boulevard reservoir oh my lord look at that woodland yeah so findley so I mean, that would have been Findlay because that's yeah. So I don't. I'll have you're so, right. It's not here. Well, it, it, it was <laughs> it was it was interesting for me to to just kind of get the big picture. Yeah, there are seventy different places. I know. And if I don't have attention. Findlay Bridge on there, then there's and, and, at least ten more. So, yeah. mm -hmm. so there are that many more, but uh, I think that's an important. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm a big picture person, but I just think that it's important to be able to say, look, it wasn't yours. This pothole is not the only one in town, mm -hmm. uh, but right. that we dealt with. Exactly. A further question that I have in terms of the whole uh, thing is, do you know what it's going to ultimately, what's the, the out of pockets going to be for us? Not right yet. Um, we're wrapping up. I think that we once in the next couple of weeks or so, I think we will have paid out all of our, I mean, I could give you an estimate, but I'll have hard and fast numbers pretty soon because the um, all contract work is done except fish hill. Yeah. So I'm just waiting to pay a couple more bills. We'll pay out um, Ultra Getty and then WB Rogers. And then I have an estimate. I know what, obviously I know what everybody's bid price was. So I had, so I could come up with an estimate, but I'll have a hard fast number here pretty soon. If I had to um, guess we're probably, you know, guess probably in the, somewhere in the 80 to $120,000 area. But we're not talking about four or 5 million. 
No, no. we had, um, I think we had original estimate was that we had around, I think, including Camp Brook about, I think my original out of the gate estimate was about two and a half million. But like Camp Brook took up about a million, <laughs> mm -hmm. Not a, a, a million of that, million. which that's federal but highway. That, that's the damages versus out of pocket. Right. Yeah. yeah. Cause you have to take a look at the damages and then usually, yeah, then we pay 12 and a half percent of that. But I think I, that Chris yeah. is, I think, I right. think we're somewhere around because he's been calculating because he's overseeing the work. I, not as high as a million and a half. We're probably below a million and a half. So 12 and a half percent of that. So, I mean, that's probably where we're landing. Yeah. So I, I keep thinking in my head, we're probably in the, you know, 100, 115,000 area, maybe. Yeah. And we've been, I think that'll be on our, us. Yeah. Right. That right. ERAP, that's, that will see, that's because I, I was meeting with another town and they were talking about having $3 million worth of expenses. Well, you're lucky in Bethel because oh, you've, yeah. you have passed the extra zoning regulation. So you pay 12 and a half percent. Towns that have not done that pay 25%. So um, there's a difference there. Chris has done a really good job overseeing the work. So we've kind of um, spread out and obviously estimate high when you first going into it because, you know, you're trying to figure what you have. And right. by the time with a constant rain, what was three inches deep. By the time and then it depends on what nine. FEMA is going to cover and not cover. Mm -hmm. um, like we saw yep. with one culvert that we had, it was in such dire condition that they're like, eh, you know, we're yeah. not covering that, you know? Yeah. So you could be in another community where maybe a lot more is not getting covered yeah. or, um, you know, there was a lot of things that we had a hard date that we had to report to. Yeah. And yeah. after that hard date, even if it was yeah. flood repaired, they're not paying for Pardon it. me was to say we had a town manager. <laughs> yeah. No, after that. <laughs> and, and for towns that don't. Yeah. I yeah. mean. It's hard. It's a lot. And after uh, there were some towns that were a, a month ago were just bidding stuff. Yeah. Like and not you, alone doing the work, but you know, so, so. but and, I, I'm just, and okay. well, yeah, once I'm, you I'm get just, a, but yeah. And the thank you. news is I hope fingers crossed because we're bidding out Pinello bridge. We have been paying off in advance the ERAF on that. So mm -hmm. I was, I had calculated our last ERAF on that, hopefully that the fiscal year we're currently in was going to pay all of our ERAF for Pinello which means, which was from the Everything April 2019, passed. that's that $1.1 million bridge to one house we seem to be building. So um, that's going to go out to bid this winter and get installed next year. So <clears throat> the, so what I, so I'm, as of this budget, we pass this budget, if say it's 120,000, then we're going to try to spread that. We'll spread that ERAF over two, three tax years to try to, so basically we carry are out of pocket in a capital fund, but we'll end up yeah, having you, to spread that over a right, couple, three years because we didn't get ahead because of Pinello Bridge. So, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's probably likely that in the next, you know, over the next three budget cycles, we're going to see a $40,000 a year for, for three years of yeah. placeholder ERAF. Yeah, which is a little which bit Which is about than, what we've been budgeting yeah. the last few years so. yeah and i'm well, feeling like we should just keep budgeting for eraf yeah. even if we haven't had a flood just to get well, ahead a little bit on off here uh, since it seems to be 2019 that's kind of what i said about yeah well, i mean we do putting aside some well we do do capital i mean we have capital road expense obviously and then of course we had the arpa money so you know yeah. it's so it's it's there but and um federal highways was good i mean it's out of pocket for us up front and then we get reimbursed but they did push through a grant for us for just over 700,000 so that I can do a requisition. We're going to pay Jay McDonald this week. So I'll be able to do a requisition next week to try to get some of that money coming back. And I have one full FEMA project in out of multiple, but it's, it's one in and hopefully that we start to see some money because this, the federal government pays you their share as you can imagine, not quickly, Very slow. but the state will not pay you a dime of their 12 and a half percent until all your projects are done. So, it's, so yeah. it takes a minute, you know, we don't get our money back that so, quick. So most of the work in the field has been done. finished. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's a lot of behind the scenes, getting paid, making sure that we have all our eyes dotted and t's crossed yeah. you um, have to go back and take you have to take photos of everything before you have to take photos of everything after you have it's a the paperwork as if you were at the last meeting you saw there was a stack on my desk and, and that's not even done yet 
you know, that's just part of it. So it's, it's. Yeah. And I'm already saying not it for the next one. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> you, know, you just have to say that I, you want. A I mean, I'm not kidding. On don't... top of my normal job, I've been putting probably 15 hours a week into it, you yeah. know, on top of normal. So it's because you it's only because you found out that the guy in the other town is getting paid a percentage of the work. Well, you we need to do a lot more that. work. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to... it's it's just a lot because all it's the all the hoops you got to jump through and um, there it's just it's amazing how much goes into this stuff. Not to mention then you're dealing with multiple different contractors and every contract is a little different and their timelines and yeah and getting it's... them stuff, not getting stuff and and it's difficult so. too because when in 2019 I think I talked to a a dozen people and nobody would come and do would come and oversee the work and that's when chris stepped up and said he would do it and um but it's hard to find people to come in and do that because it's it's another part-time job to to come in and i mean you can find somebody you can instantly go get a an engineering firm that'll come in for two hundred dollars an hour yeah and will you know and you'll you know if you did a million and a half dollars worth of work, you'd probably spend quarter million dollars worth of overseeing, right? Yeah. So it'd be nice if Therese ponied up quarter million. Yeah. But, <laughs> then you'd sign um, up for the next one. But that's, I mean, there are people that would do it, but then it's like, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Like, what, like, really? Yeah, like, what exactly. would we be doing? But, Could be, yeah, but right. unfortunately, there are some towns that do that, right? They don't have an individual or, yeah. or, um, or don't know or uh, and i don't know if that's cat z so they get a hundred percent or if that's and if that takes a long time yeah to pay out, or if it's part of the expense i mean i think with therese and i we were we got it thrown when to us in 2019 so we, <laughs> you know uh, oh, we learned to swim that day i and, guess and we did. uh I was so this time the- around we already kind of knew like the things that before that we fell down on and you knew the things you had to do ahead of we knew like we were out there the day after the storm already mm-hmm. surveying damage we knew like we needed yeah. to do it quickly where before we didn't well, know we- until we thought the fema person was showing up yeah. you know <clears throat> yeah. the what yeah because i mean i mean even some of those things like the in 2019 you just assumed that the fema person was showing up right so, but yeah. we learned that that's not what happens. Now, this time around, we're out there surveying and then other towns are going, yeah, we're still waiting for the FEMA person. We're like, well, they're never coming. Like, so you better get out there well, do And then too, there's so. something to be said for that because the gentleman, Carlos, our local PDMG was like, so do you want, do you want a FEMA site inspection? I'm like, no, 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 nope. Well, let's keep, we're going. And then the good news is so you can just keep going and getting your work done. But there are very strict timelines about you have emergency, which basically I can get a vehicle in. And then after that, it has to go all, to everything bid. stops and it all has to go out to bid. Yeah. And, but then you have, they've reintroduced this new term where you can go from emergency work to emergent work. I'm like, I'm going to play that card a little bit because oh, it, it's tough to try to just the whole levels and it's changed. The process has changed from 2019 to 2023, as you can imagine the federal government. And it's, it's quite cumbersome more than it has to be, but hmm. there is a, the state has some software that we don't have that once I get all my documents done, I said, I'm coming for you because I want that for not just us, for every town. It just, we're out there, you know, a slide rule and abacus and a piece of paper and writing down damages. And they're coming with a, taking a photo with their tablets and they're putting in dimensions and they're getting pricing and they're getting, I'm like, uh, what? Like I have to do this, you know, like, like no way. So I have already told like it was three people at V-Trans and two rivers. I'm like, I'm, I want this and we're coming for it because it's, it would just make it so much easier the way we do it. Then you get all this information on paper and then we comes back to the so office and I put it in a spreadsheet. That's it's, the kind it's insane. That needs to go to your legislator and say, look, that's something that V-Trans should provide for us. Yeah. I'm going to fight for that. <laughs> no, I want no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> saying you're, that's yeah. something that V-Trans should be doing. It, and they, yeah, I think they just have to get permission from somebody above because the local guy wants to give it to us. I didn't even know it existed until he told me. And I'm like, what? And then somebody showed up at one of our meetings and I'm like, I think the challenge what do you have <laughs> the challenge with it all is is as a citizen, yeah, immediately after the event, you see work being done, right? Usually that's kind of, and then and then it like like you you see immediate work and then you see nothing for a period of time, and then all of a sudden you see a lot of work again and and 
and it's just the whole red tape bureaucracy to get things mm -hmm. done. It's like, I would say that Teresa and I knew every step when we needed to do it. And it still has taken us over four months. Right. I mean, it's such a long process. Yeah. Because you uh, have to bid in a certain period of time that they want to see you bid. And if FEMA yeah. comes back and they can audit you for three to five years. So you don't want to cut any corners because I don't want someone to come in, you know, three years from now and say, Oh, you didn't warn that long enough, or you didn't go through the right process here. So all of a sudden you're in payback mode because you're trying to do the best you can for every resident. But at the same time, there's just legions of red tape. I mean, imagine the, you know, IRS on alcohol and, you know, this is what you're dealing with, with the, you know, it, it's with FEMA. It's just, it's so much. It's really I think they make it that difficult thinking that maybe the towns will just put the bill and they will submit the paperwork. And it, you know, <laughs> and I think one thing that we do need to look at as a town, I mean, we all have our opinions on, on, you know, the climate changing. Right. Yeah. But one thing we do know here in Buffalo is that about every four and a half years, we have an event. Right. I mean, it's like clockwork. Yeah. Um, and I, I do think that one thing that we should look harder at being, you know, that we are, you know, a corridor town is, you know, more resiliency projects to try. I mean, FEMA is a little bit of a blessing because again, you yeah. know, you're doing work for 12 and a half percent, but there are, there are some problem children areas that would be nice to address those before we have an issue. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, I, I can't say it enough that some of the reasons why this wasn't a $5 million event this time around is because we had learned where some of the problem areas were that were going to happen again. And we were able to have some people on call in those areas. So when they saw uh, a, some of the main culverts plugging up on Camp Brook, that's people were up there pulling that out. You know, we had an individual, like we said before, down, down the road from the trailer park that alleviate that so we didn't have the whole trailer plug uh, park flood out this time so i think we but we haven't really addressed what the you know long-term solution with those areas are right no, and i think true. some putting some money towards addressing what that would be mm -hmm. you know going forward on some of those and and when we do this fema work at least the two times i've done it i would say a majority of the places that we're doing work are places that we didn't do work the first time right i think um, a lot of the work that you did in 2019 I, I think helped. there are some places that you're like oh well, we'll do right. that again and we're doing that again and but i will say that a majority of the work that we have done are in new sections like maybe maybe like oh i'm gonna use um we didn't do i'm gonna use road ringe road. uh road <laughs> as a perfect example so in 19 uh we had a lot of destruction on the higher up parts of of the mountain so we had reditched and stone lined those. Well, can you imagine what happened this time around? The areas that we didn't do on the bottom blew out, right? Mm -hmm. So those would be examples of things that we probably could do better um, with, you know, How getting grant money and, and and doing yeah. stormwater management on some of those areas. Um, and, and we and we know that we have some some culverts and you know things like that that are problem children or some bridges and you know or armoring of. Uh, yeah of uh, wing walls and bridges and yeah. things like that, that we know about that, you know, if we had a pot of gold, we'd be doing tomorrow. But um, I think that's definitely something that, you know, the town should look at because, mm -hmm. you know, all these towns right through the, the valley are the ones that get hit hard every time from here down to Ludlow get yeah. hit every time, you know, and we currently all the have water one, funnels through Bethel. So we currently have one hazard mitigation grant going on for mm -hmm. Cleveland Brook and, um, or not Cleveland Brook, excuse me, Gilead, but, um, but yeah, it's just a matter of keeping your eyes open and applying for grant money. Same thing we do. Um, but yeah, it's, it's you, a, I'm glad that the spreadsheet was helpful to you, Gene. Did, did you have anything else on town manager's report? Uh -uh. Oh, just I let you know that you all had a question about uh, Dietrich about the pool. And she said that she has had businesses and residents donate money to pay for families in need to get pool passes and lessons. She said she's never had trouble that she's had a local business that reaches out and says, Hey, if you have anybody, <clears throat> let me know. And she calls and says, Hey, so she has a couple people that she can always turn to. So if, if she knows someone um, you know, has a need, she said, she's always been able to get it covered. Make sure that that's not information that she takes with her. 
Oh no, are you <laughs> and you have, she's done like a whole uh, like binder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you know. So the I, woman will just whoever is a new person just read. What? The town manager's report or the or the minutes. I didn't see either one of those. There was a, oh <laughs> I guess you two didn't get a copy. Huh? How's that? Yeah, I did they were in my I don't know. I'm sorry. Packet, and I yeah. photo <laughs> I yeah, can't thank you, but I can tell you there isn't. When you were reading to them, I'm like, I didn't remember getting, I didn't get that. Oh, I don't know. I I know there's a correction to be made on your minutes. Um, update on July flood. It says a schedule. It currently says a schedule for the pond road culvert. It's not pond road cover. It needs to read a schedule for the Can't culvert wrap. replacement near pond road on Camp Brook Road is not yet available. So I do need mm -hmm. to make that edit. Um, okay. So. Do we have any other edits with the uh, meeting minutes? Lindley says no. Dave fell asleep. Dave fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, Dave. We're just picking on. All right. Just need a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second. Okay. Were there any other communications? Um. Yeah. Let's see. For some reason I didn't get it didn't fit out. And I made your packet, so it was my fault. I'm I sorry. I don't. Yeah. Know. Somebody. All I had was the. Um, the energy coordinator okay. piece and the grant for the I wonder what I do. Okay, yeah. So you got the grant for equity inclusion. I town uh town you got the seven hundred and town meeting information. Yeah, yeah there really wasn't much shelf okay. in there. That was really it. And then and in the flood. Yeah, so stuff. it sounds like you so you just didn't get the minutes. Yeah. The energy committee meeting minutes were in there. Yeah, I didn't get that. I don't know. And um but that's Fair. it. There's a spelling error on the energy committee meeting. Scott Putney is the E N E Y, but somebody else will fix that. Yeah. But no, that was it. So. Any any other business to come before the board? How's it going? Don't see anything out there. All right. Just need a motion to adjourn. Dave moves. Second. Okay. <laughs> well, have a good night, everybody. Yeah, I hope you feel better, Dave. Let us know if you need anything. Will do. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, take nice care. Bye, Lindley. Bye, Paul.